Hi everyone, welcome to 2011 Studies. Happy Easter 2012. Um, we covered some of this uh, information uh, last year during uh, a couple studies on uh, how Peter ran to the tomb. And it's amazing that it's been a year already. I remember those studies very well. How during a time of denial um, and afterward, Peter was one of the first ones to run to the tomb, which really says a lot. I wanted to focus today um, during this Easter celebration on uh, the the words it is finished as Christ finished the work he, he set out to do on the cross, uh, the payment made at the time of the cross. And there's new things learned all the time when you study these things. You know, I'm learning new things all the time as I go back and study them. Um, the word um, finished is also translated as pay or payment. In Romans uh, thirteen six, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for their God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Interesting that that that's very similar to the payment uh, uh, related to it is finished, it is accomplished. The payment was made for sin uh, for the believers. Uh, let's see. Let's see, this is uh, Hebrews 9.14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of e e eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, a contract, there must also of necessity be the death of the contractor. Okay, that's, that's interesting to see because the time focused in 33 AD at the cross, Christ as the mediator of the New Testament of the of the new contract his death had to happen so to put into effect the testament itself the contract itself for then he speaks about this in verse 17 for a testament is of force is of force after men are dead otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator lives so the strength of uh, the contract, the New Testament, was made secured by Christ, and that's uh, as he, he died upon the cross. Whereupon, neither the First Testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and, and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things are purged, I'm sorry, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was, ne it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place, holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world but now once once in the end of the world he hath appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them 
that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I wanted to cover, that spoke a little bit of the hyssop uh, at the time of the cross. Um, hyssop was mentioned. Um, the tribulation, the shame, the gall, and the vinegar. In Psalm 69, you have um, not only Psalm 22, but this Psalm also, Psalm 69. It says, And hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach has broken my heart. I am full of heaviness. I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Now it's honor what's um interesting about this as you know David is including this into this psalm that as David went through this um and he spoke these words I think he lived this as a human and but when you're talking about Christ and he he is very related to um you know David was the uh the shepherd of his father's sheep uh in Bethlehem very much similar um like an earthly shadow of Christ to come. So as he was, you know, saying these words within a psalm, they gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Well, when Christ hung on the cross, that is what happened. And he is the fulfillment of all these things. And it even mentions that in, in the Gospels, which is really amazing, because you're you're looking at, you know, why, did, why were certain things done? Why was the garments... Uh, uh, you know, divvied up when they cast lots upon his vesture. I mean, why why did that happen? Why did uh, they not break his legs? I mean, everything about the time of the cross is significant. And Christ is the fulfillment of all these things. And that's why we, we rest assured that he's coming in power and great glory. Because, you know, you see all the the prophecies of many, many years ago being fulfilled during the time of 33 AD as recorded in in the Bible in the New Testament you know or we know that the the test the testimony of Christ coming uh, is true and it will happen it will come we just have to continue to study the, uh, the timing of it and uh, as we approach the last day whenever that last day is um, then this psalm mentions how he delivers his enemies to destruction. Let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecuted him whom thou hast smitten, and they they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Now this is interesting because this is very much related to Isaiah 53, who Christ was smitten of God, wounded for our transgressions. And also um, pretty much what happened to Judas, let their habitations be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. I think this is related to um, Judas as uh, he as the son of perdition, and uh, I think it actually can relate to today also. But that's a t totally different study. Um, add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. Now I wanted to speak on some of these uh, prophecies um, in Psalm 22 and just compare them with the, uh, the New Testament um, accounts in Matthew and other places. Psalm 22 
And they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Now this is fulfilled at the cross in Matthew twenty seven forty one. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and the elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The similarities between Psalm 22 and Matthew 27 is amazing. It's just, man, what they, what they declared at the time of the cross, uh, knowingly or not, they were fulfilling scriptures as, as they spoke. Um, here's the prophecy of Psalm 22:14. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a... Uh, this is really earth and clay, uh, potsherd. And my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. Now that, that word tell, by the way, is uh, another word for account. I will uh, enumerate. I will count all my bones. I will count all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be thou... I'm sorry, but be not thou far from me, O Lord, my strength. Haste thee to help me. Now this is fulfilled at the cross. Some of this language about the garm casting a lots upon his vesture and parting his garments. John 19:28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed, bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The prophecy of um, Psalm 22 uh, for dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed, enclosed me, they pierce my hands and feet. Um, I may tell, I may count all my bones, they, I'll use tell, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. That word tell is count, by the way, or enumerate. Um, John 19.31 The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken. And this uh, this issued forth death uh, during a crucifixion uh, more rapidly because they were lifting themselves up uh, during this time of anguish to, to actually breathe. Um, uh, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. Now this fulfills uh, a couple prophecies actually, but in Exodus 12.43 And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, and keeping in mind that this is Christ was the Passover lamb who died for us. Um, and the, the Old Testament uh, ordinances and laws that were set forth about uh, eating the Passover um, lamb was very, very related to the time of the cross. Um, actually, the fulfillment of it. It was just a, a foreshadow of it. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought from money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. 
In one's house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither sh shall ye break a bone thereof. That's uh, not you shouldn't break the bone of the the Passover lamb. And then we just we we read that, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already uh, he was dead already, they break not his legs. Um, very fascinating too that Christ uh, prayed uh, during a precise time. I I looked this up and I'll, I'll cover this in a little bit, so I won't mention it now. But there was a ninth hour in which he prayed. Um, let's see. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith they shall look on him whom they pierced now here this is Psalm 34 18 the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth him out of them all he keepeth all his bones not one of them is broken Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. That's a great promise. Um, he keepeth all his bones, and not one of them is broken. That's fascinating, too, because you think of the body of Christ, how Christ came for you know his people uh, who were chosen from the foundations of the world. And we think of the believers making up the body of Christ. You also have to consider that as an aspect of uh, his bones, bones not being broken on the cross as the Passover lamb. Um, okay, this is interesting. I found this to be really fascinating. The ninth hour is called the hour of prayer. Um, this is found in Acts 3.1. Now Peter and John went, to, went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. Now, we transfer to Mark uh, 15. And Mark, this is during the time of the cross. And when the sixth hour was come, uh, Christ was crucified in the third hour. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that word land is uh, earth. I can put that up, but I'll I'll um, scroll the the um, the actual uh, Greek word on that. Let me read this again. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, "Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani," which is being interpreted, "My God, My God, why has thou forsaken me?" Now he was praying in the ninth hour, and we 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 uh, read that uh, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. So he was praying in the ninth hour. He was quoting um, or fulfilling. I'd like to say that better. He was fulfilling uh, prophecy at that point. Um, this is uh, a fulfillment of Psalm 22 to the chief musician upon Aheleth. Uh, which is um, a, a word for doe, a, he, a Hebrew word for doe, and shahar, which is a Hebrew word for dawn, uh, the doe of the dawn, a psalm of David. Psalm 22, 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Uh, I wanted to point out here that you know how Christianity, how the cross of Christ is set so far apart from any religion of the world. Um, and it's it's not 
even grouped in, in all these religions because it is so far set apart because it deals with truth. It deals with sin. It deals with death. It deals with uh, resurrection unto life. Um, all these aspects of what Christ did on the cross in 33 AD and seeing how this will all come to a great um, a great ending uh, when Christ returns and we will see the results of what he accomplished on the cross uh, Christ being the first fruits who was resurrected uh, from the grave from the dead and how the believers will be resurrected into life um, and that's exciting. I mean, I, you can't get anything, any topic more exciting than that. And there's no other, there's no other re world religion that that covers these aspects of truth. You know, it's just it's sad to see because a lot of people, and you know, the god of this world is has blinded uh, uh, people. Satan has blinded people to the truth of uh, the Gospels and that and the, the truth of the Gospel and the good news because you see so much confusion out there uh, in this world in, in present you know teachings old teachings um, some proclaiming there is no mediator between God and man and yet the Bible really emphasizes that Christ is the mediator and what he did uh, payment for sin allows them to be that mediator between uh, man and God. The Word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, now we read Psalm 22, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Um, I wanted to actually speak on uh, the hope that awaits. And this is another thing that, you know, there's no, you, you, you can read so many different um, doctrines of of uh, other religions of the world, not one of them offers true hope. Um, you know, some people believe in in uh, coming back as a, a raindrop or a porcupine or whatever. What hope is that? I mean, <laughs> seriously, you you have no hope in in coming back as something else. Uh, it is appointed unto a man once to die and then the judgment. It, it's the hope that Christ gives is that he took our place for our sins as the substitute he became that mediator uh, between God and man and without that I uh, it's just yeah you can believe anything you want to or the world can believe anything they want to but it's it's not going to change that truth um, first Timothy 2 5 for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am, or, I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Um, we covered the phrase, it is finished, that the payment was made on the cross. But it's interesting that uh, this phrase is also related to the end of time, when, you know, we're at that, approaching that time when Christ is at the gates ready to return. At a very precise time in history, just like, you know, he fulfilled the being the Passover lamb in 33 AD during that time. Um, in Revelation 10, 7, and we've covered this before, but I think this is, um, it's important to interject this in relationship to the cross, because when he said it is finished, uh, that word finished is also related to Revelation 10. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin the sound, I want to underscore the word days, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now the believers are the stewards of the mysteries of God. That truth is found in the Bible. Um, 
in 1 Corinthians 4, Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Um, Paul's words also focused on Christ appearing as, as we finish the race. And that's important um, as Christ uh, you know, gave up the ghost and before that he said, it is finished. And then he gave up his spirit to the Father. Very important to see because, you know, here's uh, Paul talking in 2 Timothy 4. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So here we have uh, Paul proclaiming that he has finished his course. He, the race he set out to, to run, as God called him, he had finished it and he had, he had kept the faith. Um, as we approach the coming of Christ um, on the last day, uh, there are certain topics that I really feel important to cover at this point. I've been listening to um, very well-known speakers in uh, Christendom, in Christianity, uh, who have airway time and they are proclaiming that uh, the believers will not go through tribulation, uh, the, the, the time of great tribulation, which they believe is seven years, that they will be, uh, quote unquote, taken out or raptured um, beforehand. I believe the rapture is the the catching up of believers to meet Christ in the air is an accurate teaching, but it is not accurate if you are suggesting that the believers are going to be whisked out of this out of this earth off this this planet prior to the time of great tribulation because in Revelation it declares that those who have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb these are they that came out of great tribulation so we know that the believers endure great tribulation and we also know that the the day of judgment the day of resurrection is the last day the last day it is not that the believers will be raptured and then days continue after that. The believers are stewards of the mysteries of God. We will be here until the last day. Now, of course, there are going to be some who, who pass on and go to be with the Lord um, you know, prior to that. But I'm talking, speaking of a general whole that believers will be here Believers in Christ will be here on earth right up into the last day. And we are, as stewards of the mysteries of God will be proclaiming that everlasting truth of the gospel until then. Many verses um, you, can, you can speak of uh, touch on this. And what, they, what some people are teaching I think is really dangerous. I think it's dangerous to think that, we're gonna, that believers will escape and then you know you you better hope that you're raptured and then because what's coming on this earth after that is a terrible time there's something worse to fear and that is that when Christ comes in power and great glory he is not going to set up an earthly throne on earth 
he is going to come to judge the living and the dead. And we cannot stand in his presence in flesh. We cannot stand in, in that kind of glory, folks. That's, that's just so contrary to what like John experienced on the island of Patmos as, as he was um, scripting what he, he saw. And he fell dead. You know, he fell dead before Christ as a dead man. You can't stand in the glory of, of Christ and in his presence and, and not become extremely fearful. And I think what this, this kind of teaching does is this sort of brings Christ like back um, almost like 2,000 years ago, brings him back in time as the earthly Christ who uh, came as the, you know, the suffering servant, um, in, came as the Son of Man. Christ is coming in power and great glory and on the last day. You know, there's no mystery of, of when that, the, the rapture happens. It happens on the last day. And the believers will be here until the end. And I think it's important to cover some of these aspects because of what is being continually taught. Um, and I've, I've already done one video, but I might have to do two of these to fully cover this. Because this kind of a teaching has gone on since uh, pretty much the 1800s. It is not an old... Um, early established teaching of the early believers some 2,000 years ago. It is not. It is relatively new and yet the churches have um, adapted this um, scenario uh, within their teachings of uh, the rapture and the, the seven year tribulation period and a man, Antichrist, uh, desecrating a temple. So which they think is going to be that's considered holy to God in Jerusalem somewhere. So what's important now is um, focusing on that and proclaiming this uh, the Christ is coming on the last day. We at this point are patiently waiting uh, for God's word to be revealed to us uh, as we continue to study this. Um, I, we're going to get back into the study of the three years of a hireling within three years the glory of Moab will be contemned. All that language speaking of how the, um, the houses of God who have lifted themselves up um, will be brought low. So that's an important aspect of this, but so too is countering some of the teaching that is uh, going on at the, you know, we're going to escape, we're going to be whisked away, and then this earth is going to be left to uh, a man antichrist, and so on and so on. And they're misunderstanding also the how the number 1,000 is used in the Bible. But I wanted to, you know, go right into that after this study and uh, just to show what some of the teachings that are out there right now and how they're so off base. Um, and it's sad because that, that it sort of issues forth confusion. Um, I know a lot of these books are popular, the Left Behind series and so on and so on. But the truth of the Bible is that the believers as stewards of the mysteries of God will be here until the last day. And we'll underscore some of that in, in, as we um, study, continue to study the scriptures. Anyway, I wish everybody a happy Easter. This is a great time of year. Uh, great day today. The sun finally came out. Spring. Uh, it's, it's a great time to celebrate the resurrection of Christ because of the the weather itself and you know everything blossoms and and comes forth and for those who have allergies it's probably not a great time <laughs> but it's still uh, a good time to celebrate uh, the resurrection of Christ I want to close with just this hope that you know this is not something that uh, we just have to celebrate once a year well, every time I study the Bible it seems like I'm thinking about it or, or looking for, you know, the verses that talk about, you know, being resurrected with a new resurrected body. Um, and the Bible says we shall be like him. We shall be like his glorious resurrected body. And uh, what a great promise. What a great promise. You have no more decay, no, all, all the things that, you know, your cells deteriorate and all that. Or being in a, in a, in a body that, um, where mortality puts on immortality and it will not perish. What a hope. What a great, great hope. And like I say, 
There is no other religion on the face of this earth who can touch the promises of what Christ not only did, but what he promised to those who believe in him. My name is Marty Cattuzzo. Uh, you can contact me at 2011studies at gmail.com and uh, I'll be uh, posting probably another study in a couple days on uh, the topics we, we just mentioned. I mentioned on the uh, what's being taught about the rapture and the Antichrist and all that. Anyway, uh, God bless everybody and happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. <laughs>